The pain is unbearable. Summoning up all of your energy, you open your eyes. First one, then the other. They narrow to stilts as they adjust themselves to the strain of seeing once more. Then they relax as they make out familiar shapes in the dim light. A dirty floor, rocky walls. Then the pain takes over. Your head rocks, your eyes submit and close tightly in agonised grimace. Instinctively you raise your hands to cup your face and the low moan mingles with a rasping sound as your rough fingers rub the scalpy skin above your eyes. After some time the pain begins to ease. You open your eyes once more and peer out from between your fingers. You seem to be at a dead end of a passageway. Your surroundings are barely visible, but a dual glow is coming from the northern extent of the passageway. It stretches before you. A sound is also coming from this direction, of irregular breathing. Something is alive up there. You heave your great bulky body to its feet. Swinging your head slowly from side to side, your progress is decided. Northwards is the only option open to you. Muscles strain and succeed in raising a lumbering foot which thuds loudly on the ground in front of you. You repeat the action, first with one foot, then the other. After four steps, the motion becomes automatic. You are moving more quickly and more quietly up the passage. When you reach the end, your eyes are drawn to a huddled shape lying on the ground. The small figure lies on its side, facing away from you. It is shrouded in a dirty brown cape tied around its neck and it lies in a puddle of thick red liquid. Its body rises and falls irregularly with each breath. Some unidentified feeling swells within you. Is it anger? Is it hate? Is it fear, curiosity, or hunger? Or maybe even sympathy? You bend down towards the little creature, uttering a meaningless grunt as you do. <coughs> the sound rouses the figure which rolls over slowly to show its face to you. The creature's dirty little face is light-skinned, though barely visible under the thick hair, which shades its closed eyes. From its chin, the hair rolls abundantly down to the chest in a grey, unruly mask. Under the body, and now exposed by the creature's movement, is its sharp, shiny shaft, as it catches your attention. As you stand there staring, the creature's eyes flicker open. They focus on your bulky shape and look of the terror streaks across the creature's face. In spite of its pain, it fumbles and grasps for the shiny shaft, holding its pointed end out towards you and baring its teeth. This little creature happens to be a dwarf. You decide to help. You reach down with your hand to help him. But as you move, the little creature strikes you with his sword and cuts into your forearm. Luckily, the tough scales prevent it from doing any real harm. Considering your size in comparison to his, his action was understandable. Now, instead of reaching for his arm, your hand opens and grips the dwarf's neck. You struggle to control your actions, but to no avail, your sharp talons dig into the creature's unfortunate flesh. His eyes bulge as he screams frantically. He hits you with his sword, but the blow lacks power. Then, his body goes limp. Your tremendous strength has put the creature out of its misery. Although you wish to help the dwarf, you have helped him to his early grave. You travel west along a twisting passageway. Several times you bump clumsily into the wall and grunt in annoyance. The temperature drops and each breath sends a steam of snorts from your nostrils. The sounds ahead and the flickering light <laughs> warns you to take care. But rather than making you stop to listen, the prospect of an encounter seems to excite you. You bare your teeth, your claws, and stride forward into the chamber. Roaring like an enraged demon, <laughs> and you rush into the open chamber, ready to take on whatever's inside. Terrified shrieks come from the small party of adventurers. Three figures are warming themselves by a fire. Your eyes fix on the smallest of the three. Your breathing gets heavier, and you feel the pure hatred that grips you. Without hesitating, you stomp across and grab the miserable little hobbit with your claws. The other two are caught off balance and are slow. The hobbit has no weapon. He should make an easy victim. You tear him up with your demoned claws. Now you must turn your attention to the other two humans. 
While you've been battling their companion, they've been preparing to attack. The red-robed figure is facing you, pointing the little finger of each hand at you and mumbling. The shiny human grabbed a sword, similar, you remember, to the other dwarves, but larger, and shouting to the other. You do not understand what he says, yet you can also not fight both at once. Ignoring the weaker of the two humans, you face the paladin in his clinkering armour. He holds his ground, his sword posed, ready to strike. Your final blow sends the knight flying across the chamber to land in a crumpled heap against one wall. You grunt in satisfaction. Your attention is drawn immediately on the dead hobbit lying on the fire. Your mouth waters as the thought of its sweet flesh. But you have forgotten the final adventurer. The wizard has now completed his spell. With a final incantation, he delivers his magic directed straight towards you. You feel no more than a tingling sensation as his spell takes effect. A smile spreads across the sorcerer's lips. You intend to step forward and slash him with your claws. But your muscles do not respond. Instead, you step over the dead paladin, pick him up and carry him over your shoulder. You do the same with the hobbit. The wizard turns and makes his way down the passage. You follow, carrying the rest of his party. And this will be your fate. To spend the rest of your life as a slave to a master whose control creature spell has worked perfect. <laughs>